So I bet the draft process was something you'll never forget. What was that like for you? So this was actually my second time going through it because out of high school, I was kind of going through the same thing. And I ended up getting drafted, but it was in like the 22nd round and I turned it down. I was like, oh, I'll go to college, have no issues. And this year, this draft was like completely different where I put myself in a really poor position academically, so I wasn't able to play. And luckily, I had shown off in summer ball in the year before that, that like I was good enough to like play in the Cape Cod League and everything else. So I had a, like a bunch of scouts still following me from then in high school. But this time around, it was more of like a, we know you're going to get drafted, but we have no clue like when you're going to go. And I was like, okay, it's like either way, man, it's professional baseball. Can't beat it. And just, I mean, I'll never forget it where we were, we always listen to like the draft going on if you're with a bunch of baseball guys, just because everyone knows everyone in the baseball world. And they just pretty much were like, we were in a team meeting and I was playing for Katua at the time in the Cape Cod league and had coach had just told us like, Hey, if you get a call, like just step out. It's perfectly fine. Don't worry about not answering the call. Like you can do it. So like right when he said that I got a call and I was like, this is weird. Like, and I found out he was from the Brewers and I was like, this is even weirder because the day before in like the 10th round, I'd gotten a call and I was like, okay. And then it ended up getting like changed. And I was, it was from the Brewers and I was like, I have no idea what's going on right now. And I didn't, didn't even believe it at first this time. That was just, I mean, I'll never forget that. That was the coolest thing I'd ever been part of. Were you expecting it to be Brewers or did any other teams show the same level of interest? Um, the Bru uh, There was a lot of teams that were liking me, but not like 11th round, like, like late thir day three, like maybe free agent sign. And I knew I always like had got along with really well with Ginger Bolson, who is like our area scout in my area. And she always loved me and I talked to her a bunch. But really, I never like I had I had absolutely no clue who was going to pick me. Like I had several guys go to like be, go, come to me and be like, hey, like I'm going to put your name in for like the guys that I like the most. And I was like, OK, but they can only do so much. They can like their word means little to some people that in some teams. But yeah, it was it was definitely not the Brewers. Yeah, uh, pretty unique story, though, draft wise. Oh, it's great. It, this year has been a blast and a jaw oh, it's been all over the place needless to say yeah that actually brings me to one of my later questions but i'll ask it now you know i said that folks had some minor league ball this year have you kind of had a chance to sit back after the draft process and kind of just be like take it all in not really honestly it's, it was kind of crazy because i have a fiance at home and i was like this is going to be kind of weird like I'm playing pro ball. Like we finally, like I'm finally wanting, like getting able to again, where the whole year, like I've just been waiting to play baseball. I was like, I can't, you can't like, if you're ineligible, you can't even like touch the field if there's a game going on. So I was just like, I've had five or six outings in the Cape. And I was like, I don't, I was like, this is going to be weird. And then I got here and actually it was weird. It didn't, it doesn't really feel like pro ball to me. Like it does not be like cocky or anything. It's more of like, it's like, imagine like, it's like college baseball, but without like school. So you're just living the, every single bit of like the best things where you get to go to practice. You have all your friends with you at all times. And you're just like having the day of your life. And you come back. I mean, like right now, I think our, we get there like eight in the morning and leave at like two in the afternoon. So we just like get to spend the rest of the day. Like our big thing right now is like playing pool and playing Mario Kart on the Switch. Like it's, it's honestly great, but you don't really, you don't really feel it. Like, you don't always be like, oh, I'm like, this is professional baseball. I can't do this. It's more like, hey, like, I made it, but not like made it, but you, you're here. Like, all right, there's like one step. So you have like the five hours a day where you're like, okay, lock in right here. And then you step off and you're like, okay, I can go about like my normal business now. Yeah. What would you say is the biggest kind of difference or adjustment you've had to make so far in just your brief minor league time? Uh, time changes. They've absolutely killed me because my brother was having his vow renewal actually at Michigan. So when I got here, I had to leave in August, like I think it was mid August to go back to Michigan, which is three hours ahead of Arizona, of course. And then was there for four days, then came back for, I think it was three days. And then I, I had, luckily I got promoted to North Carolina, which is back to Michigan time. So it's been like back and forth. And then I went home for a week. We're like on Michigan time, then came back here. So now we're just like, it's getting to like 9 p.m. And I feel old just because I'm, I'm exhausted. Yeah. Just, like, just finding the, finding the times like sleep and stuff. That's been the 
biggest challenge so far. Yeah, no, I bet. And I was kind of touching on the Cape Cod League stuff too. What was that like um, just to experience that? Because I grew up in Boston, so kind of going to those games was That's, kind of- Oh, my. That was by far the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, I, I will never forgive my first game that I, like, got there for. I was like, okay, you know, like, I said, like, 94, 97. I'm going to be above average here. And every single guy throws, like, at least 95. So like, oh, like, well, I'll touch, like, a 97. Or you get guys that just sit 100. And the hitters are un- – they're just undeniably amazing. But you get up to a kid's, like – I played with probably, like, one or two first-rounders for, like, next year's draft. And you kind of, like – you see it on your side, but then you can also see, like, kids, like, I'll never forget for – I think it was Harwich. I can't remember for sure. But there was – their second baseman was from Japan and was just incredible. And we're like, okay – like these are these are legitimately like the best players, not like the best players in the draft. It's like the best players. Doesn't matter like if your age or anything. Yeah. Is there anything you're able to take to help? Um, you know, with your own game, playing alongside that kind of talent. Huh? Sorry, I broke up for a second there. Is there anything you've been able to take, kind of, to improve your own game from playing alongside guys with that type of talent? Yeah, my favorite thing is, is I always ask like hitters like what they hate the most. Like I'm pretty, I'm a very simple pitcher, but like there we go but I'm, I'm a very simple pitcher like I don't like to call off games but at the same time I'll think about like I'll ask like hitters and what counts like when do like you guys not want to swing at a curveball like off-speed pitches and they'll be like oh like is up and in really like that effective to you guys or is it not like is it not what I think it is like most of the time it's like what you think already but then you get like a couple surprise answers where you're like okay like if I'm facing a really good hitter I know I, I can throw like this pitch and this count and most of the time like they get like a swing and miss or some weak contact just because there's nobody in their right mind would throw over there just kind of like weird things like that yeah but, but well, yeah and, and definitely like learning how to like spot up pitches because on their feet like you can miss a fat I think it was my last outing in lower this year was I like had thrown four scoreless hadn't let up a run yet and missed one ball and it was just right down the middle got like let up my only run and I was like okay it's like yeah you really can't you can't miss anymore yeah I've always been surprised when I went to see those games just the talent level it's incredible it's by far the best I've ever played with in my life which of course it makes sense but yeah. it's, it's crazy playing with guys from other countries I was also wondering who's had the biggest influence on you um baseball wise honestly I have to say like I was by like a couple of people, like I've had like different stages in my life where like my brother would help me a lot growing up. And then I kind of got into like high school and made this really great connection with the, my summer coach and just, I'm still really close with him. And just, he like pretty much, I'll always give him like the credit, like you fully taught me how to pitch and he knows it too. He just never like will say it. Cause I mean, I gained, I think I went into like my freshman year of high school throwing like 78, maybe touch 79 and just, had a crazy velo for my like sophomore junior year and I was like okay he's like hey you, you might actually make something like something out of this if you're going to be careful with it and this year I would say it would be uh my trainer back at home because I was in like a pretty tough spot mentally I mean I'm not able wasn't able to play or anything like that and he's like I've been through it I know like what it's like I don't know what you're going through but he's like figuring out like ways like he'd be like I'm gonna like take you out to dinner like let's go watch like Red Wings game like, oh, I'm going to make sure, like, you come to lift in the morning. Like, those kind of things where, like, someone's going out of their way just to help your overall well-being. Yeah. That's kind of ties to my next one. Is there any advice that, you know, anyone's given you since you got drafted that kind of you're going to carry with you for the rest of your career or anything that's kind of stood out? Oh, there's there's one. It's stupid. It's not really that dumb, but it's um my trainer. Do you know who Cressy is? It's like Cressy's yeah. performance. Yeah, so he did an <laughs> internship with Cressy. I think it might have been something Noah Syndergaard said to him. And I was like, it's easy to, it's easy to make it to the MLB. It's harder to stay there. Because like you get a lot of guys where they make it and then immediately they get injured. They get injured in like the minors. And he was like, that's why training is so important. Because he's like, you not doing like one to two reps legitimately can mean like you just get injured and then you lose out on millions of dollars. Or just even playing time. Because as a pitcher, I mean, if you get hurt, that's normally like you get demoted. And then you have to also go back to the facilities and then rehab. And then once you're fully back, then you have to build all the way back. So it's just, it's a crazy cycle that you go into. Yeah. 
And also kind of who are some pitchers that you watched um, growing up or who are your favorite guys to see on the TV? I'll always say my favorite pitcher by far is Max Scherzer. That, yeah. that man is an absolute animal. I would, I wish I could replicate his game, but I just kind of like, I kind of always try and like have that mentality because he is just, every time like you look at him on the field, you're like, that guy's an animal. And then you see him off the field and he's like the nicest guy ever. So I kind of like that thing. Like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know any, many other pitchers other than literally Max Scherzer. That's the only person like I'll ever watch. If I watch him pitch, like, okay, like, I know who's throwing today. Yeah. Is there from kind of his approach that you try to um, factor into your own? Just being aggressive. And I always live by the, um, I read a quote somewhere that it was Max Scherzer's and it was like, throw every ball as hard as you possibly can. And he's like, then learn how to control it. And I was like, Oh, okay. And I just was like, oh, we're just going to try it. But I was like, I think it was like a good mentality. Just to, that way you don't like weaken off of aggressiveness. Like you're always on top of it. Like you want to like get the next guy instead of like, okay, well, I'm going to think about what I'm going to do to be like, no, I'm just going to throw as hard as possible. Yeah. And also looking towards, you know, next season, what's one thing you're going to try to focus on in the off season to prepare for 2023? Um, so this one, this off season is actually the craziest yet because I'm getting sent to Australia for winter ball. But let's see. Right now it's like I've got – I've learned a sinker since I've been here, and I've learned a pretty good changeup, but I want to get, like, a better control of it where I've had this weird thing going on right now where if I'm on a mound, I can throw it for a strike but I don't get a lot of confidence in it because I get confidence in my pitches from throwing them in catch play. So like when I'm wild in catch play, I like don't trust it on the mound and then it works perfectly fine by me. I just get worried about what that next one is going to be. So I think I've been, I've been trying to throw a change up for the past four years and now I'm like, I finally like have a hand of it. So that's like my biggest goal is like, okay, I'm going to go to Australia and I'm going to learn how to throw a change up so that I have five pitches instead of just like four and something that I kind of trust. Yeah. Have you ever been or that's, that's a cool spot to play winter ball. No, I've never even been out of the country. I mean, I'm from Michigan. Our, our driver's license, I think I think one of the things of them is, like, you can go over to Canada without needing a passport and things like that. But I've never I've never even thought about going out of the country. I was like, yeah, don't even think anything about it. <clears throat> well, um, and also, besides baseball, what's, you know, what's one of your favorite things to do? Um. Well, you know, since I don't really have a car out here, of course, nobody really does. Um. It's, I think it's mine and the guys, honestly, just playing games on the Switch. We're, we're all, like, so insanely competitive that, like, we play Mario Kart and it would be the most insane thing ever. Or, like, we bought Switch Sports, which is just Wii Sports. And I'll never forget how intense a game of tennis can get. It's yeah. just – you just play, like, very competitive games on the Switch. Or, like, we'll just go out downstairs and we'll play pool. Or la one of our hotels had a ping pong table, so, like, we'd go out there and play for, like, two hours non-stop like we need like a winner like make championships and everything yeah, that's a good way that's a good way to spend it then oh, my yeah. last, and my last one is what's your favorite baseball memory whether it's minor league ball or kind of just at any point mm. that's hard i think i think mine would be honestly it's probably this year when i got drafted and i was at my host family's house and i wasn't worried about like what they were doing but my um my trainer and like all my family like my close family like my trainer did it my brother everyone and my I'll never feel like some of my trainers said to me and he was like we did it he's like you did it you got like three more steps to go he's like it's not that hard you think simple he's like you got three more things to do and you're in the you're making money and I was like okay we're just like simple things and like one of my like, I mean I also live off a quote where like it's like my one my buddy back at home. And uh, like anytime, I can't really get mad at the game of baseball after he told me that. And he's like, he pulled me aside with my freshman year and I was on like JV. And he's like, baseball, a game, baseball's a game and games are fun and right. And I was like, oh well, yeah, you're not wrong. And he's like, yeah, so why are you getting so mad? It's like, there's no point. It's like getting mad is not going to fix anything. And I was like, okay. I mean, kind of weird to say it like that, but I mean, it works. So, okay. So I just always kind of like stick to that when I take it too serious. I mean, it's a job, but at the same time, it's also baseball and you play way better when you're actually having fun instead of being a serious guy the whole time. Yeah. There's a couple of guys I've talked to on the Pirates too, and they've kind of said the same, that that was like some big advice that they got not to like overthink it. Especially yeah. Like the ups and downs of just what baseball is. Yeah. Like it's just, baseball is natural. You're going to get hot streaks and you get cold streaks. I mean, 
once you ride, like, that's what I get worried about a little bit when I'm on like a really long hot streak. I'm like, one of these days, like, I'm going to get it handed to me. Like, I won't be thinking on the mound, but I'm like, walk away from the game. I'm like, it's going to be some time. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to see it. And I'll be like, ah, yep, this is the day. Like, you just know. Yeah. Perfect, man. Well, those were all the questions I had. Um, I'll probably post a little clip from this. If that's okay with you to kind of pump people up and then have the written yeah. piece out, out by probably Friday. But I appreciate you again for taking the time to talk to me. Of course. No problem. Just let me know. Of course, I will. Good luck. Good luck um, in Australia with the changeup. Thank you very much. All right. I'll see you later. Have a good one. All right. Bye.